eyes. Wouldn't your wife or girlfriend love it if you treated her to the very best this Christmas? Now you can with the world's softest pajamas by Pajamagram. Created by a team of pajama experts, the world's softest PJs are lighter than a cloud, softer than a bunny, like cashmere, only better. She'll love how heavenly they feel. Includes free gift packaging and Christmas delivery is guaranteed. So visit pajamagram.com or call 1-800-GIVE-PJs. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airwaves of ESPN Radio. It's 98.7 FM New York City. That's 710 ESPN LA. And, of course, nationwide over the airwaves of ESPN Radio, Sirius XM style, Channel 80. Number to call up, as always, is 866-729-3776. That's 866-729-ESPN, 866-SAY-ESPN. Sound a little bit different. My apologies. Got a scratchy throat, one of them sinus infections. Mucus in your throat. Your throat is scratchy and, and, and dry and all of that other stuff. But I'm here, at least for today. Don't quote me on tomorrow. Just hang with me today, please. Lots of stuff to get into today. Uh, obviously, we saw a football game last night that uh, reverted into something that none of us should be comfortable with. A lot of cheap shots, unnecessary um, violence being exacted against one another. This is what the Pittsburgh Steelers going up against the Cincinnati Bengals has come to. We'll discuss that as the show progresses today and what kind of hammer, if any, that the National Football League should bring down upon uh, any of those players. Leoka, his head shot on Antonio Brown. Uh, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, his shot uh, to Vontez Burfecht, even though Vontez Burfecht has his own history. One would argue that doesn't mean he deserves what happened to him uh, with that shot. Uh, so we've got, the, of course, our prayers go out to Ryan Shazier, uh, just a regular tackle, no illegal hit involved, but he led with his head, um, snapped his neck back, ultimately hurt his back, uh, no movement with his lower extremities initially, had a lot of guys on the Pittsburgh Steelers who were shaken, scared to death, uh, that paralysis may have been a part of the equation. So, you know, our prayers go out to him. Uh, he was in a hospital last night in Cincinnati. They're talking about relocating him back to Pittsburgh. If they got to that point, then obviously it would be one of those situations. Uh, they felt comfortable enough to move him, which speaks uh, to how well he may have been doing. We'll get into all of that, plus a little bit more about Eli Manning in, in just a second. But I wanted to go a bit macro here in terms of, you know, not just local subjects or what have you, but the kind of stuff that resonates nationally, the kind of stuff that resonates in anybody's home. The kind of stuff that's relatable to anybody, whether you're black, white, Latino, Asian, Native American, Jewish, Gentile, Protestant, it doesn't matter. When you're talking about situations similar to what's going on with LeVar Ball and pulling his son, Leangelo, out of UCLA, it speaks to a lot of different issues. Um, for me personally, let me be on the record stating this. I don't like it one bit. I really, really don't. I don't like it because... I don't think it's the right decision. I don't like it because I don't like the notion of a father pulling their child out of school because he doesn't like how his son is being treated. I can understand that on its premise. Of course, a father should have that kind of influence. But when it involves a kid who's committed a crime, created an international incident by committing that crime, and then you turn back and your initial reaction is that it wasn't a big deal while you were in China. And then you come back to the States and you still maintain that kind of thinking. What does that provide? What does that teach? What does that accomplish? These are all the things that I think about. And more importantly, I think it's all the things that all of us should be thinking about, not just as fathers, but as parents, as adults. What kind of message does that send? Now, I'm not here to excoriate LeVar Ball. I happen to like the man. I disagree with this particular decision, but I'm not going to go beyond the pale like so many other people and just do everything that I can to vilify this man. I'm not going to do that. What I will tell you, however, is that I don't like it one bit. First of all, we have to understand that in the day and age that we live in, everything you do, folks are looking to emulate it. So you've got parents out there who want to live vicariously through their children, like some would accuse LeVar Ball of doing with his children as we speak. Here's the difference. You ain't LeVar Ball. 
You don't have a son who started UCLA as a freshman and is now the point guard for the Los Angeles Lakers. You don't have a second son who was good enough to make the roster at UCLA. You don't have that. You don't have the kind of sons with the necessary athletic ability where even if he's wrong, you know, he gets to bloviate about how all three of them are going to end up being members of the Los Angeles Lakers. You don't have all of that. And so to send that kind of message, although he's not responsible for what other parents are thinking and everybody doesn't have to be a role model, it just, it, it just to me, it just smells. It sends the bad message. I'm not getting my way, so guess what? I'm going to make this call for my son. My son is loyal to me. Those are the words that he used. So in other words, if Leangelo said, Daddy, I really, really want to stay at UCLA. I don't want to leave school. You're trying to tell me as a father, you're going to be telling him he's disloyal to you because he doesn't agree with your decision. When everything about LeVar Ball reeks of independence, being an independent thinker, suddenly your son, your, 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 your seed, your flesh and blood exercises the same kind of characteristic and you're going to attach loyalty or lack thereof to that. I don't like that one bit. Point number one, I think that's important to say. Let's go a step further. Do we know definitively that this is the decision that Leangelo wants his daddy to make? Because I don't know what y'all, who y'all have been watching, but every time I see LeVar Ball around his kids, I don't see kids that would be willing to disagree with their daddy. Of course you love him. Of course you respect him. Of course you appreciate the upbringing that he provided and the way that he took care of you. All of those things are incredibly important. But in the end, making your own decision does matter. Because LeVar Ball can't pull LiAngelo out of UCLA. LiAngelo has to make that call himself. LeVar doesn't have the power to do that. At least legally, LiAngelo has to do that. But a bigger issue here is what Bill Plasky wrote in the Los Angeles Times today. And that is UCLA's probably saying good riddance. UCLA's probably ready to throw a party. I'm paraphrasing, but that's essentially what he's saying. Because if you're UCLA, why do you want to deal with all of this noise? And speaking of noise, why is that relevant? Because just the other day, LeVar Ball is talking about how Coach Luke Walton and the Lakers aren't coaching his son tough enough in Lonzo. He also talked about a game that they lost the other night where he pointed out how Brandon Ingram didn't get rid of the ball soon enough and give it to his son. Now, Lonzo may be adult enough, big enough, seasoned enough, etc., to handle that with class, to handle it by shrugging it off right off his shoulders and his back. But LeVar Ball then raised Brandon Ingram and the other guys on the Los Angeles Lakers. If he starts talking about them to elevate his son, how are they going to absorb that? I mean, should Magic Johnson sit this man down and have a conversation with him? I don't even think Magic Johnson can shut him up. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem. And I don't know how you get around that. Now, there are some people that are sit up there and they talk about how LeVar Ball is independent and the NCAA exploits kids. What's wrong with him exploiting his own kid? And the NCAA makes money off of his kid. Why can't he? And the NBA is going to make money off of his son. Why can't he? Blah, 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 blah. Can we real? Can we deal with the real world, please? When you don't have your way, Most people don't get to take their ball and go home, figuratively speaking. The way LeVar Ball literally did that during the summer league by yanking his team off the court because he didn't like fish officials, particularly one female official who he said wasn't ready. These are the kind of things that end up working against you. And these are the kind of things I'm fearful will end up working against LeVar Ball. There's a lot to talk about today with Eli Manning and the New York Giants, with last night's Steelers-Bengals game, with the NFL, and how it's monitored safety issues so stringently over the last few years and how everything was justified watching one night of football. There's a whole bunch of stuff to get into today, including the Golden State Warriors. 
Six ejections, 18 technical fouls, leading the NFL, the NBA rather, in both categories. Oh, there's a lot to talk about today. But LeVar Ball is what's resonating. Everybody in social media and beyond has been talking about it because they know this transcends him and his sons. It's about a parent potentially going too far. What's the line? Particularly in this day and age. 866-729-ESPN. It's 866-SAY-ESPN. Back with your calls and more in a minute. We got a lot of this uh, talking to do. A lot to discuss. Don't touch that dial. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Give Stephen A. a piece of your mind. He is sorry. Call him weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern. I mean, just trash. At 866-729-3776. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to GEICO. I've never felt more alive. Disclaimer, GEICO cannot guarantee you will feel more alive. You either possess functioning respiratory and circulatory systems, or you do not, or you are a zombie. If you are indeed a brain-starved zombie and you would like to save money on car insurance, the GEICO legal team applauds your excellent life choices, even in your shambling afterlife. But we strongly encourage you to visit GEICO.com or download the GEICO app. Please stay a minimum of 500 feet away from our large and presumably delicious, delicious brains. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Already said, okay, he made a bad mistake. We're going to drop the charges. That's the punishment they gave him. Now we over here. Look, at, we got to serve some more punishment. What is the loan process for? We only went to UCLA, one and done, to play basketball. I ain't got no fallback plan because if I got a fallback plan, that means I'm going 80% this way and 20% to my fallback. I'm 100 in. So I never get stopped. I'm going to get Jello in shape. I'm going to work him out. We're going to do some other things, and he's going to be headed to the NBA. All these boys are going to get on the Lakers. Watch how I do this. And people are going to look up and they say, wow, how they all get on the Lakers? I'm not going to lie. He sounds crazy. He really, really does. Because if you got his son, Lonzo, what do you need the other two for? Okay? So him, all of them being on the Lakers, I'm not buying that one bit. And obviously one can make the argument that all of us are suckers because we're giving LeVar Ball the attention he craves. I don't fall into that thinking. You know, I remember my man, Mike Wilbon, who I love daily and I've admired and looked up to for many, many years, but that doesn't mean I can't respectfully disagree from time to time. They talk about talking about LeVar Ball as like malpractice. Uh, Golick never used those words as far as I recall, Mike Golick, but he did allude to it before. Well, the people decide. You know, a lot of people want to talk about LeVar. So guess what? We're in the news business and he's a newsmaker, at least at this juncture, regardless of how we want to look at it. And, you know, that's how you resonate with folks by talking about the things that they want to talk about. And so I don't like what I'm seeing from LeVar right now. I don't like this. I don't like pulling your son out of school. I don't like advertising the fact that, you know, an education is not the priority. Uh, You have to remember he pulled his son LaMelo out of school. You pulled him out of school because you had a problem with that coach. And you said, you know what, I'm going to train him myself and we'll homeschool him. I have no problem with folks who homeschool their children. But the agenda and the motivation behind it matters. Now, in fairness to LeVar Ball, I don't want to hear a bunch of people, and I'm going to go here, particularly white folks, complaining about that and asking what kind of message that sent when nobody said anything about Bryce Harper being homeschooled. And his daddy clearly stating that I'm training my son and preparing my son to be a major league baseball player. How's that working out? Bryce Harper's one of the best players in baseball. And you know what? Before all said and done, he may end up getting a $400 million contract. So let's be careful about, about, about denigrating LeVar Ball, but you know, we didn't have anything to say when Bryce Harper and other folks who have been homeschooled in their lifetimes did the same thing. It's just that LeVar Ball is far more loquacious, far more obnoxious. And from an imagery perspective, you just wish he piped it down and just handled things a bit more subtly. Having said all of that, to me, that has nothing to do with him taking LeAngelo out of UCLA. If Le- LeAngelo is not leaving UCLA because LeVar Ball thinks that he could do a better job of training than Steve Alfred in the UCLA basketball program. LeVar Ball... Pulled his son out of school because LeVar Ball 
doesn't want his son being held accountable for his behavior over there in China. And in fairness to the balls, we ain't talking about the other two individuals that were with him that were teammates. Nobody's talking about their family and how we got to hold them accountable. But UCLA hasn't let any of them play, which means that it's equal and fair treatment that they're receiving. Not to mention the fact that I thought Ball and the rest of the players were going to be back by New Year's Day. So if that's the mentality, I mean, what are you doing? It makes no sense. It really, really doesn't. But that's just me. 866-SAY-ESPN. Michael in Brooklyn, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, Stephen A. I'm glad you let me on your show. I appreciate it. Um, I got got two points to make. One is... um, I think we're missing the point here. LeBron, LeBron Ball is taking his son out of school, and he's missing what's most valuable in college is the education. What he should have said was, okay, my son's going to sit out for the whole year, or whatever time of play may be, but he's going to sit on, on, the, on the bench and do study his, his work because it's most, what's most important is his education. They never talk about that. All they talk about is his basketball skills. One injury, and you're out. Your, your, your career is done. But the education lasts a lifetime, and he's missing that point. Nobody's ever mentioned that. None of the sportscasters, none of the newscasters mentioned that his son is missing a valuable education. And well, for well, him well, to be well, 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 all right, we heard your point. Make your other point because we all know point that. Is, I don't know if you remember me, but if you think about it, about seven years ago, me and you had a car accident at the New Jersey Turnpike going to Brooklyn. You remember me now? I do not. I had a gray Cadillac, and you had a, a black SUV, and you sideswiped me at the um, Jersey Side Holland Tunnel. You remember that? Hell no. I sideswiped you. You, you got the wrong. Do. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Never sideswipe nobody in the New Jersey Turnpike or at a tunnel. That's a lie. Goodbye. John and Hoboken, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey Stephen, how you doing? I'm all right. I'm Go actually ahead. I'm actually on the New Jersey Turnpike now, but I'm not going to accuse you of any traffic incidents. Thank you. But uh, I just wanted to say real quick. Normally, I listen to you on the podcast because I'm at work, but I'm fortunate enough to be able to be filtered in with like the big mics in the Carlton and Tampa. But uh, anyway, I'll get to my point. But um, my point is, a year from now, my prediction is that Lavar Lavar Ball will be an afterthought simply because if Lonzo continues to play below expectations. Obviously, uh, LiAngelo and his issues at UCLA, whether he finds a home at another school or not, um, and uh, the youngest brother, uh, LaMelo, I-, I just don't think that they're going to be as good as uh, Lonzo was. So my, my prediction simply is that a year from now, uh, LeVar won't have um, a-, a sounding board uh, because basically he has- he'll have one son in the NBA, and two sons just trying to well, I make will say this. Themselves. I will say this. I'm going to give Lonzo more credit than that. Lonzo has to work on his shot, and he has to develop a go-get-it mentality. When I think bust with, a, with Lonzo, it's only because of an absence of aggression. He can handle the rock. He's an exceptional passer. He has a high basketball IQ, and he's a really, really good kid who's willing to learn and to get better. He's got to change his shot, but he's also got to make him. He's got to be aggressive. Get to the hole and make things happen. Create opportunities for other people. Get yourself to the free throw line a little bit more. Get in the weight room, put on some work. He's got a lot of work to do. What I would say to you, however, is that it's a tough, tough spot for Magic Johnson to be in, and I'm going to tell you why. This kid, Jason Tatum, picked one spot after Lonzo by the Boston Celtics. This kid is special. He's shooting about 49% from three-point range. This kid is special. De'Aaron Fox from Sacramento, he's not bad, okay? Dennis Smith Jr. in Dallas, he can ball. Mark and in Chicago, he can ball. And did you see this kid, Donovan Mitchell, that I keep talking about at Utah, drop 40 the other night? Look, man, there were guys that the Los Angeles Lakers had opportunities to grab, and they didn't because obviously Lonzo wasn't just a ball player. He was a local product. Chino Hills starred at UCLA, and as a result, Magic Johnson making that business decision because Jerry Buss was so abominable, so awful, that you didn't just have to make you know, a good basketball decision. You had to make a good business decision, inspire folks to spend their money to walk through the turnstiles to see whatever, whoever you drafted play. 
But Alonzo's got to step it up and be doing everything that he can to live up to that number two overall billing. Otherwise, he ain't the only one that's going to go down. Magic's going to go down with him, and that's what I don't want. Yeah, and, and real quick, Stephen A., I totally agree with you. Lonzo seems like a good kid. I just hope that he makes a name for himself and we're not really talking about his uh, his dad going forward. But uh, thanks for taking my call. Appreciate it, man. 866-SAY-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. More of your phone calls on LeVar Ball and pulling his son out of UCLA in a minute. Plus, I'm about to get into Eli Manning and the New York Giants because where do you go from here? Where do you go from here? He's back in the starting lineup. The coach and the GM are gone. Where do you go from here if you're Eli Manning? Do you stay put and look forward to a new regime? Or do you say, get me the hell up out of here and send me to Jacksonville or Denver? All that and more coming up right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Yeah. Coming from where I'm from. I'm from. Yeah. 32 minutes. Past hour number one back here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Again, I'm sounding a bit under the weather because I am. Sinus infection, scratchy throat, and all of that stuff. But I'll be better. I promise you that. I ain't going the rest of the week like this. By the way, I got to call this fight Saturday night at Madison Square Garden. Lomachenko versus Rigandau. Uh, Diao. I got to check the correct pronunciation for his name. That's a big-time lightweight fight. Can't wait to do it. It's ESPN in concert with Top Rank doing big business in the boxing world. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-SAY-ESPN. Before I get back to the calls, obviously on this show yesterday, <clears throat> we carried the press conference of John Mara, owner for the New York Giants, um, hours after they unceremoniously dismissed GM Jerry Reese, along with Coach uh, Ben McAdoo, with four games left in the regular season. First time the New York Giants have done such a thing since 1976. First time they find themselves looking for a head coach and a general manager at the same time since 1979. This is an organization that outside of the New England Patriots have have won more Super Bowls than anybody in the National Football League over the last 31 years. But this is what their situation is. And as a result, you got a lot of people that are speculating about a lot of different things. Uh, I think our colleague here at ESPN, Lewis Riddick, would make an exceptional executive. I hope that he gets a look. Um, I think about coaches who are accomplished. I remember Will Kane came on first take this morning mentioning Jim Harbaugh. I don't want to hear Jim Harbaugh's name in this particular situation. Fix Michigan first, okay? What I want to hear is Nick Saban. And for those that think I'm crazy, let me say this to you. Nick Saban, 130 and 20. 130 and 20 in his 11 plus years at Alabama. 130 and 20. That's an 86% winning percentage. Yes, he's old school, about 65 years of age. Don't play. Doesn't take any nonsense whatsoever. In today's generation of NFL players, that's kind of what you need. It's kind of what you need. What do we lament about Ben McAdoo? He was scared to deal with Odell Beckham Jr. Could you imagine somebody the week of a playoff game, even on their off day, going to South Beach to hang with the fellas, taking pictures of yourselves half naked on a boat? On that Monday, albeit an off day, that Monday before you're scheduled to play the Green Bay Packers in a playoff game that Sunday? Could you imagine somebody on Nick on, on any Nick Saban team doing something like that? Somebody on any Bill Belichick team doing something like that? Maybe I'm wrong about that because with New England Patriots, you never know. Somebody might have went. I don't know. Remember one time Tony Romo went on a little vacation to Mexico. I guess it's possible. But I just find that to be highly unlikely. I just do. Having said all of that, I think the gorilla question for the New York Giants is where do they go next with Eli Manning? He's back in the starting line of his 210-game two, winning streak, has been his consecutive starting uh, streak has been ended. So because of that, you've got some people walking around thinking that's what the Giants wanted on purpose. So they have to concern themselves with that if they decided to move in a different direction, blah, blah, blah. All right, maybe. I doubt it, though. But if I'm the New York Giants, what I'm looking at now is what am I going to do with him? I need to convince him to want to stay. Because whether you go out and you draft Josh Rosen or Sam Bernard 
or anybody else, Baker Mayfield or whomever that you're in a position to grab, guess what? Chances are they ain't going to be ready to go from day one. They're not going to be ready. They're going to need some assistance. They're going to need some time, which means you're going to need Eli to hold down a fort. Now, if I'm Eli after this season, I want to get the hell up out of here. I know that Denver's a playoff team with Eli Manning. And so is Jacksonville. That's what I'm thinking. <coughs> Excuse me. 866-729-3776. 866-ESPN. To the phones we go. Back to the phones we go. JP in Brooklyn. The, Lord, the floor is yours. Go ahead. Hey, what's up, Steve? Thanks for having me. Um, I was listening to, you know, I always listen to your show. You know, however, after your show, the Michael K show comes on, and I was listening to what Steve Young said, had to say about Eli Manning. Steve Young said, Steve Young said, in order for Eli Manning to be good, we need entirely too much. We need a top five defense. We need a, a wall in front of him blocking for him. We need receivers. We need a, a, a serious running game. You know, a running, a serious running game. Can I, you know, can I me, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, JP. Let me interrupt you for a second. I want to be on the record saying I respectfully disagree. Because when Eli Manning won Super Bowls, they didn't have a few of those things. Let's keep that in mind. There was no stout running game. There was no stout offensive line. So some of those things you absolutely need, and Steve Young is absolutely right. He's more qualified than I'll ever be to discuss that. But I don't think that he, based on what you're telling me, because I didn't hear him say that, I don't think you're painting a completely accurate picture that Eli Manning needs everything because he's won specifically without having everything. We've seen it. But go ahead. Smith, we did have a very, very good running game, you know, in both Super Bowls. We had all of our Super Bowls, we had a very good running game. That last Super Bowl we won, we had a very good Super Bowl. Uh, Lamar Bradshaw and those boys? Yeah, uh, not just Bradshaw. How about the other dude? Uh, 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 the big, I forgot his name. He's really, he's big. It'll come to you me. Know, we well, go had, ahead. We had a very good running game. We had a top five <laughs> defense. Brandon and Ingram, you talking a, about? Brandon yeah. Jacobs. You're uh, talking about Brandon Jacobs. Yeah. Brandon Jacobs, exactly. Brandon right. Jacobs. He he was he was a lot better than what anything we have right now. You know, well, that, that, we that, 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 that that ain't saying much. That's like being. We a, had a, that, do you do you realize that the year the Giants won the Super Bowl, they had they ranked dead last in their rushing attack. They had the thirty second well, ranked rushing attack in the entire NFL. Did you know that? Look, Stephen, we need too much for Eli. The the, the okay. league has moved away. The league has moved away from the pocket quarterback. You know, mm -hmm. th those things are di uh, are dinosaurs. You know, we need to. Well, I don't think I don't. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not hearing anybody refuting that. JP, nobody is knocking that. What we're saying is, is that we were just addressing the point that 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 Steve Young tried to make. Now, the first time they won the Super Bowl back in 2007, they had the fourth ranked Russian attack. The second time they won in 2011, they ranked dead last in their running attack. But they still won the Super Bowl. All I'm saying is there's been plenty of times where Eli hasn't had much. Let's be fair to him. Now, granted, he's immobile. Um, obviously he needs a little bit too much. We need a mobile quarterback, a dual threat at the quarterback position. Some would say when you're looking at the New York Giants, we get all of that. All I'm saying is let's not just act like this dude is some scrub or this dude can't throw the football. Eli Manning can throw the football. He can make big throws. He can go on the road and win big games. We have to at least give him that. That's all I'm saying. Last two years, brother, when was the last time has he put the team on his back and will this a W? He may not be he capable. Hasn't. He may he may not be capable of that anymore. But can I ask you a question? Uh, have have there been quarterbacks in Super Bowl history who've won Super Bowl championships and they clearly weren't capable of doing those things? Yes. I mean, well, a couple of years a, a couple of years back when Peyton Manning won the Super Bowl in Denver, did he put them on his back, or did that defense come to the rescue? No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because Peyton Manning, his his brains. You know, even though he couldn't throw the game, uh, brilliant. Throw but, but, the ball, but but he's brilliant. He's he's brilliant, JP. That's not what I'm saying, though. I'm only addressing your point. The point is, is that there are quarterbacks who don't have to carry you on their back. 
in order to be victorious. There are other components that come with a football team, and Eli Manning has had very little to work with. That's my point. What defense fears Eli Manning? A def- right now. A, a, defense, a defense that knows that Eli Manning has receivers to throw the football to? Come on. He had, we was 0-5. We had uh, uh, everything. And you know, nobody the, the, feared this him. Team, this, team, this, team, this team was not the same. They came into camp ill-prepared. All they had was OBJ. Brandon Marshall wasn't the same. Sterling Shepard wasn't the same. Your offensive line was in shadows. You had no running game to speak of. That is a fact. Leave you with this, Stephen A. Smith. Go ahead. Excuses are tools of the incompetence you use to build monuments of nothingness. This is where we at. We are we are with nothing because we keep making excuses. We're not making we excuses. To, I don't. Yeah, last yes, time I are. checked, those were facts. Last time I checked, those were facts. You're acting like I'm saying Eli Manning is a star. I'm not saying that. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just saying you're pointing to Eli like, okay, let's replace Eli and all the problems will be resolved. Another quarterback, is it going to resolve that defense? Another quarterback, is it going to fix that offensive line? Is it going to fix that running game? Give me Teddy Bridgewater. Don't give me no fake quarterback. Teddy Bridgewater, goodbye, JP. JP, you annoyed me. Have a nice day. I'll talk to you another day. You just said Teddy Bridgewater. You just said Teddy Bridgewater. I'm not talking to you. You have no credibility right now. You just said Teddy Bridgewater. That's what we need to give. Teddy Bridgewater. That was your that that's your that's your saving grace. Stop it. Just stop it. 866-729-3776. More to Stephen A. Smith show on ESPN in a, in a, on ESPN Radio in a minute. Teddy Bridgewater. Oh, please. Wanna be a part of the show? It's Stephen A up weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern at 866-729-3776. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Don't worry. I have every intention of getting into what we witnessed last night. Violence in the NFL. Is it out of control? We'll touch on all of that in hour number two. Stick around. Listen live to the Stephen A. Smith Show. ESPN Radio. Let's get back to the phones at 866-SAY-ESPN. It's 866-729-3776. Jeter in L.A. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, Stephen. Hey, how you doing? I'm all right. Go ahead. Good. Um, a couple things. Um, number one, probably the happiest guy in the world is Steve Alford. Mm-hmm. Pulling that's those, what Bill, uh, that's what Bill Plasky wrote out. essentially today. The great Bill Plasky for the LA yeah. Times. That's what he wrote today. Yeah. They got to be happy about that. Number, uh, number two is... Uh, you know, it, it's very sad. I uh, I know that uh, the father uh, really looks after the kids and everything, mm-hmm. but reality, he is putting so much pressure on them. And you look at Lonzo, mm-hmm. he's like deer in the headlights, big time. Yeah. And I predict that Magic and Palenki will not put on it. Uh, they'll give him two years, and I think he'll be traded out of here. Well... If he if 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 he doesn't show up and produce, sure, um, I definitely think it's possible. But I just think that just imagine what the Lakers are going to have to go through over that same time period if 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 Lonzo doesn't step up. You would think that when you have a father that deposit checks, he's looking for you to cash that you'll be more aggressive. That's been my biggest thing with Lonzo, the aggression. I want him more aggressive, but I'm not going to lose faith in this kid. He's a wonderful, wonderful kid. He has an incredible basketball IQ. His passing ability cannot be questioned. I just want to see him be a bit aggressive. I want to see him embrace Showtime. And and one of the things that I think that hasn't been mentioned enough, Jeter, but I'll mention it here. If you recall correctly, years ago, 1979, 1980, I believe, um, the Los Angeles Lakers had a decision to make. It was going to be Irvin Magic Johnson, or I believe – Junior Bridgman. The Milwaukee Bucks had the number two overall pick. The Lakers had number one. Irvin Magic Johnson was coming out of Michigan State in the draft, fresh off of winning the national championship. If you remember, Jeter, Junior Bridgman was a pretty damn good basketball player. Don't you remember that? Yeah. But he wasn't Showtime. 
He didn't have that magnetic smile. He didn't have the ability to push the ball up the court and just and just pass the ball the way that he passed the ball. He was something Magic Johnson was something special to behold. Junior Bridgman was an all-star. He could ball. We all knew this about him, but at the end of the day, he had one problem and one problem only. He was not Irvin Magic Johnson, and that was the difference. And what I'm saying to you is that if you are Lonzo Ball, that's what you got to think about. That's what has to matter to you, and that is my concern. You're the number two overall pick. You're the number two overall pick, and I'm sorry. I mean, it might not have been Junior Bridgman. I forgot who it was, you know, but it, it was it was somebody that was drafted directly after Magic Johnson. And their only problem is that they wasn't Showtime. Period. And that's what I think we need to yeah. think about here. They're trying to do Showtime, but reality is they don't have the ball players for that. I got you. They don't have it yet, but I gotta give. I gotta be fair and be fair where it's due. Let me tell you something right now, my man. The Los Angeles Lakers have some decent young talent. Kuzma can play. He can play flat out. Let's get that out the way right now. This brother's something special. He can play, and he's gonna be special. I'm very. <coughs> excuse me. I'm very very pleased with what I have seen from Julius Randle coming off the bench. Okay. I'm very, very pleased with that. Definitely so. So I look at stuff like that. By the way, I had that all wrong because it was Sidney Moncrief that ended up going to Milwaukee, number five in that 1979 draft. I remember correctly. It was Sidney Moncrief that I was talking about, not Junior Bridgman. And David Greenwood was taking number two. But everybody was talking about the Lakers needed a guard, and they went with Magic Johnson instead of Moncrief. Moncrief was a damn good basketball player. But he wasn't Showtime. And that is the difference. And that's what everybody has to pay attention to, particularly when it comes to Lonzo Ball. Because that's what you're looking for. If you're the like Magic Johnson and them didn't just draft this dude because he could play, they drafted him because he was out of UCLA. They drafted him because he has the potential to reinvigorate Showtime. And that is what you wanted to see from this man. That's what you wanted to see. Right. That's what you need to see now. I got to go, Jeet. I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. That's what you're looking for if you're ever Magic Johnson. You're looking for somebody to re- reignite Showtime. That's why Alonzo is in L.A. That's what we need him to do. Daddy or no daddy. Hour number two up next. Lots to get into. Don't touch that dial. Stephen A. ESPN Radio. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app. Guys, wouldn't your wife or girlfriend love it if you treated her to the very best this Christmas? Now you can with the world's softest pajamas by Pajamagram. Created by a team of pajama experts, the world's softest PJs are lighter than a cloud, softer than a bunny, like cashmere, only better. She'll love how heavenly they feel. Includes free gift packaging and Christmas delivery is guaranteed. So visit pajamagram.com or call 1-800-GIVE-PJs. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Hour number two. The Stephen A. Smith Show here with you for the next hour over the airwaves of ESPN Radio, Sirius XM style channel. Lady number to call up as always is 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-SAY-ESPN. I'm going to get to some football and the violence we witnessed last night in just a second. But I want to go back to this Lonzo Ball deal as it pertains to Irvin Magic Johnson because I want to give y'all a little basketball fanatics everywhere. I want to give you a little history. And I apologize again because I always confuse Sidney Moncrief with Junior Bridgman, both of whom played for the Milwaukee Bucks at one moment in time. Coming out of the draft in 1979, Magic Johnson was this six foot nine point guard in a power forward's body who could pass and dribble and rebound with the best of them. The question was, could he shoot? According to numerous reports over the years, Jerry West former coach of the Los Angeles Lakers at the time, 
an advisor to the former owner, the late Jack Kent Cook, who owned the Lakers at that time, and somebody that Kent, Jack Kent Cook admired tremendously, he took Jerry West's advice to heart. It mattered to him. And according to numerous reports, reports something Jerry West is reticent to acknowledge according to those reports, Jerry West had recommended that the Lakers take Sidney Mon- um, Moncrief instead of Irvin Magic Johnson. Okay? Because Irvin Magic Johnson couldn't shoot, and he was wondering whether a six nine guy could hold up in a fast-paced NBA. But the reason why I'm bringing this up, because Lonzo Ball is on my mind. And I want you to sit up here and listen from an article that I'm reading dated back in 2012 in Sports Illustrated. It talked about in the weeks leading up to the 1979 NBA draft, the Lakers owners of the first week were more than torn that were more torn than in the ensuing decades they'd ever let on. <coughs> Excuse me. There were two magnificent college basketball players on their board, players with myriad skills, loaded resumes, and franchise-changing potential. One was a high-flying six-foot-four guard out of the University of Arkansas named Sidney Moncrief. The other was a transformative six-nine guard out of Michigan State named Irvin Johnson. People called him Magic. Moncrief was everything a pro team would want in a player. He was polished beyond polished, lightning quick, a dead-eyed shooter with a Walt Frazier-esque first step and an eagerness to play tenacious defense. The Los Angeles Times, Ted Green compared to him rightly to David Thompson. And I'm here to tell y'all, this is Stephen A. talking to you. That was a very accurate comparison. He was comparable to David Thompson. It says here, quote, he was a terrific basketball player since Paul Westhead, who would eventually coach the Lakers that season. You could watch Sidney Moncrief play and know he had all the twos, right? Then they went on to go and talk about Magic Johnson. And they talked about Jerry West debating the issue because he had already had Norm Nixon, a top-shelf point guard who had just averaged 17 points and nine assists in just his second season in the NBA. The idea of two stars playing the same position made very little sense. But listen to this quote from Sidney Moncrief, which is something that a guy like Lonzo Ball should take into consideration, which is something that the New York Knicks could take into consideration with Neil Aquina and his his useless offensive self. He plays defense, but offensively, I mean, please. But listen to this quote from Moncrief. This is years later. Honestly, I didn't have a strong preference. Detroit, Chicago, Milwaukee, Los Angeles, New York all expressed interest, and only L.A. was warm. So I guess that was preferable. But really, I just wanted to be drafted. This is what he said. Then it goes on to say, of course, we all know this how this turned out. Under the directive of Jack Kent Cook, the team's outgoing owner, Los Angeles went with Johnson's larger-than-life persona and proceeded to have one of the great runs in NBA history. Moncrief, meanwhile, fell to the fifth pick where Milwaukee swooped him up. He became a five-time All-Star as well as one of the finest players in franchise history, but he was no Magic Johnson. And listen to this quote. If you ask me what would have happened had the Lakers taken me, Sidney Moncrief said, I'll be completely honest. Maybe we win a championship, but there's no way the Lakers do with me what they did with Magic Johnson. That team needed one guy to get everyone to play together. And he was it. There's a reason Magic Johnson goes down as one of the great players. He could do everything. That's all you need to know about Lonzo Ball and his expectations. Your Magic, you draft somebody looking to reinvigorate Showtime, that's what you're looking for. Do you see why I get on aggression? Do you see why I focus on the want it mentality? The go-get-it mentality? Do you understand now, ladies and gentlemen? Do you understand why it's driving me crazy to watch guys like Lonzo or Neil Aquina play in a point guard spot in an NBA in this day and age? Have you not seen CP3? 7-0 since he returned with the Houston Rockets. Have you not seen Steph Curry? Have you not noticed Russell Westbrook out of UCLA, by the way? Have you not seen all of these people? Are you not waiting if you're Cleveland to see what Isaiah Thomas is going to do when he comes back? Have you not watched Kyrie Irving in Boston? Do you not get it yet? Huh? Huh? This is what it's about. 
You can't be some passive guard. Sit back, taking pictures, passing the ball, running to the corner, wait for the action to come to you. You got to take it. You got to want it. You got to push for it. You got to go get it. You got to force everybody to come get it because you're coming. That's what you got to do. It ain't happening in New York. It ain't happening in L.A. It's happening in Boston. Chances are it's going to happen in Cleveland. It's going to happen in OKC. It's happening in Houston. It used to happen in Chicago when Derrick Rose was there. A healthy Derrick Rose. Game has changed. It's been modified to some degree. But we all know what the principle is. You're the point guard. You're the captain of the ship on the floor. There are expectations that come with that. You got to want it. Especially if you're in L.A. Or New York. Top two markets in America. And in the case of Lonzo Ball, my God, it's L.A. It's showtime. This is what it's all about. It's Tinseltown, baby. It's Hollywood. It's Rodeo Drive. It's Venice Beach. It's Melrose. What you think this is? You got to go get it. That's why every game that Lonzo struggles makes life harder for Magic. Because Magic knew what he was going to do when he arrived in the NBA, and he did it. He knows what it takes. He's the one who swore by this kid. That's the way it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's the way it should be. 866-729-ESPN. It's 866-SAY-ESPN. Your calls and some NFL talk and more on this subject in a minute. You are listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio. Want to be a part of the show? Hit Stephen A. up weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern at 866-729-3776. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to GEICO. I've never felt more alive. Disclaimer, GEICO cannot guarantee you will feel more alive. You either possess functioning respiratory and circulatory systems, or you do not, or you are a zombie. If you are indeed a brain-starved zombie and you would like to save money on car insurance, the GEICO legal team applauds your excellent life choices, even in your shambling afterlife. But we strongly encourage you to visit GEICO.com or download the GEICO app. Please stay a minimum of 500 feet away from our large and presumably delicious, delicious brains. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. Uh, Before I get back to the calls, let me say a couple of things. Number one, Juju Smith-Schuster, wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who laid that hit on Vontez Burfecht has been suspended for one game. He deserved it. Uh, Leota, Leoka, the cornerback for the Cincinnati Bengals, with that head shot to Antonio Brown in the end zone, he also got suspended for one game. (coughs) Excuse me. Uh, it's the right call by the NFL. You got to send a message that you're going to lose time and you're going to lose money if you distribute headshots. It's just that simple. You got to do everything you can to avoid those headshots. And, and and I can't stand when players act like, okay, I'm going to go right after your knees or lower because I want to make sure I don't hit you in the head. Stop it. There's plenty of space from the head to the knee that you could hit without going for somebody's head or going to shatter somebody's leg and end their careers. It makes me sick when guys say stuff like that. That's just so stupid and it's cruel, but it is what it is. They both deserve the one game suspension. It is what it is. It was very alarming to see the the Steelers Bengals game last night. As big Ben Roethlisberger said, we play against the Baltimore Ravens. That's just hardcore and NFC AFC North football. Against the Bengals, it's a bit something different to the point where even Mike Tomlin refused to get into it because he knows what time it is. It's an ugly, ugly situation. You could see him and Marvin Lewis shaking hands. There's no love lost between those guys, not from what I saw. 
And I can tell you right and if you're Marvin Lewis, I mean, is it official yet? Should you be fired by now? Folks in Cincinnati, you, you don't understand? This is Mark 15 years this man has been the head coach of this franchise and not one single playoff victory in that span. That's an embarrassment. And as a black man, I speak up on behalf of African Americans all the time, wishing that they get some of the opportunities they deserve. But I'm also going to get rid of those who deserve to be gotten rid of. I'm not saying that Marvin Lewis don't deserve to be a head coach somewhere. He damn sure should be out of Cincinnati. Should have been going years ago. Needs to be gone now. I don't know how many years I have to prove my point. Another season, another time he's going home. With the talent that he has, he's not the leader of men that you need him to be for that franchise. He needs to go. Plain and simple. But back to the game, it was ugly and it was violent. 11 personal personal fouls. 11. Vontez Burford carried out on the stretcher. Antonio Brown headshot. Shazier. We're praying for him, but that was no illegal hit involvement. He just snapped his head back. He went in with his head all wrong, positioned wrong, and it tweaked his back a little bit, but there was no movement in his lower extremities, and guys were in panic mode because they thought he was paralyzed. So our prayers go out for him to, uh, for full and healthy recovery. But anything that you were wondering about in, t- in terms of safety measures that the NFL felt compelled to enforce all of these years, the time for lamenting that stuff came to an end last night. You can't have guys playing like that. You can't have guys on a football field playing in a sport that already allows an alarming level of, inv- of violence legally. And you still can't play within the rules with the latitude that you're getting, that you already have to inflict violence and punishment upon another human being. You still can't control yourself. You don't deserve our sympathy. You don't deserve our understanding. It's that alarming. It's that bad. I'll tell you what was even worse to me. Gronkowski having his suspension reduced to one game. Who the hell made that decision? They should be ashamed of themselves. Gronkowski is lucky he can get suspended for the rest of the season. Ladies and gentlemen, he's about 270 pounds. A defender considerably smaller than him. Defended against the pass, was holding a little bit, shoving a little bit, no doubt. Got away with it, frustrated Gronkowski. While on the ground, laying with his face towards the ground, Gronkowski came up behind him. He was laying down. Gronkowski was standing up. Gronkowski came up behind him, with leading with his right elbow, and put the full weight of his 270 pound body on the back of this dude's neck. Forcing him to be concussed. And all that for was for one game. I like Gronkowski. He's a fun loving dude. Should have been suspended a minimum of three games. Minimum. And I say, again, what I said yesterday, because I see, you know, various publications and all of this stuff, you know, pointing to what I said yesterday. Of course, the media in Boston's going to pick up on it, you know, including WEEI, which is a fantastic, phenomenal radio station. They just got a, a couple of dudes that don't belong on the air, but that's a different subject for another day. Because they're always trying to get somebody. Instead of just doing their damn job. But the station is good with a lot of good people, a lot of good hosts as well. I ain't talking about everybody. But here's the deal. It's very, very interesting. Because you're going to be you're going to see people pointing to Tom Brady and his histrionics and theatrics on the sidelines with Josh McDaniels. Gronkowski in the penalty end. Stephen A said, you know, if they were black, they'd be treated differently. You're damn right. I said it. I didn't stutter. Could you imagine a 270-pound black man leading with his elbow and going to the back of some dude's neck while they were on the ground? You know what they would be saying about him? Do you know what they would be saying about Cam Newton if he was on the sidelines acting up the way that Tom Brady did? And I have no problem with Tom Brady whatsoever. He did did nothing wrong. I'm not talking about Tom Brady. He did nothing wrong. You're in the heat of competition. You're upset with your offensive coordinator. You're a bit demonstrative. You speak up. You speak out. 
Your body language isn't great. So what? You're in the heat of competition. That's their business. I'm not saying anything negative about Tom Brady whatsoever. What I am saying is, had that been Tom, Cam, Cam Newton, he would have been treated a bit differently. I said it. I mean it. I ain't stutter one damn bit because it's the truth. 866, say ESPN, it's 866-729-3776. Back to the phones we go. Jose in New Jersey, talk to me. You're live with Stephen A. Yeah, I think that what the NFL should really do is, uh, at the end of the day, figure out a way how to punish them even more. I mean, that one game suspension for uh, Gronkowski, that is ridiculous. And I know the guys are bigger, faster, and it's more violent, like you say, opposed to the 80s and the 70s. But these guys, at the end of their career, the NFL should provide some kind of medical insurance for these guys because they give so much and get so little when their career is over. And one quick thing on the, uh, on the, on the Giants. I'm a Jet fan, but they have to keep Manning if they're going to get a rookie quarterback because it's baby steps and it takes three to four years to get one of those college kids to start playing like a professional. I'm speaking from experience because I see what the Jets had in the last couple of years with quarterbacks, and they don't want to go that route. I got you. Thank I appreciate the call, man. Thank you so much. 866-729-3776, 866-ESPN. On another note, according to NBC News, Russia has been banned from the 2018 Winter Olympics due to a doping scandal, but athletes uh, can still compete as neutrals, whatever the hell that means. More of the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Back to the phones we go right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, 866-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. Allen Brooklyn, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, Stephen A. How you doing today? Sorry, you're a little under the weather. Thank you, man. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment on the LeVar Ball thing. I think he's really doing his sons a disservice. I, I, he did a brilliant job marketing Lonzo and getting the big baller brand off the ground. I think now he just needs to take a step back and let the boys be boys, let the men be men, let Lonzo concentrate on playing ball, you know, and and, and, and his other son, uh, Leangelo, I mean, he needs to pay for what he did. I mean, you want to pull them out of school because they suspended them? I mean, what what kind of lesson are you teaching your son? That Amen. There's no consequences to what you did. Amen. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it, man. Let's go to uh, Thomas in Newark. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Thomas. Yeah, hey, how you doing, Stephen A.? I'm all right. You're live on the air. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I know you know the term double consciousness about the voice. Like when you were speaking about Gronk and all these different people, all these different treats, I understand things are not fair. Like, we don't get the same treatment as black people in America. That's leading me to um to what the ball father is doing. Yo, none of these institutions really care about our kids. That school didn't let that boy go there for free. They're not. He had to play basketball and earn his way to go there. They don't reserve the right stop to right punish there. him stop, as stop, they want. Stop, stop right there. You're missing the point, in my opinion. Here's why, Thomas. That's a different subject. The issue in question is, if you are a father, do you pull your son out of school because he may not get to play until after Christmas? That's the question. We know what the universities do. We know how hypocritical the NCAA is. We know all that other stuff that you were going to say. But the question is, do you pull your son out of school just because he ain't going to get to play until after Christmas after he went to another country and created an international incident by committing a crime. Hello? You didn't hear me? No, no, no I'm saying, but there are other schools. Like, we have to start. No, 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 no. That's no, not no, what I'm talking No, 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 no. Listen, that's not the issue. Talk, stick to the issue. It's not about there being other schools. Forget all of that. He can sit out of here. He can go to another school. OK, he can go to the G League. He can go play overseas. Maybe forget all that for a second. If your son committed a crime and created an international incident because of it, along with two other players, do you pull your son out of that school? The school you let him go to the school you told everybody in the world he was going to. Do you pull him out 
just because he can't play until after Christmas. I don't know what they're talking about in the background. I don't know the conversation that's going on. That Hold on, I don't forget that. LA. I just asked you a question. You're talking to me. The hell with all of that. I just gave you the scenario. Forget all that. You're talking to Stephen A. Did you call up to the Stephen A. Smith show? Did you just do that? Ain't you talking to me? Hello? Goodbye, yeah, I'm man. I'm talking to you. Cut, get, get, get a better signal. Get a better signal. Get a better signal. I asked you three times. The point is, see, that's our problem. White, black, and beyond. Every time somebody don't want to discuss an issue, they, they, they got a problem with it and they create a different problem. I understand all the stuff that goes with it. The college institution, the fact that they shouldn't have dominion. All of this stuff, I get it. I understand. He can go to another school. I understand, Thomas. I understand. The question is, if your son created an international incident by committing a crime in the school that you allowed him to go to, that you bragged that he was going to go to, when your other son was there, that school decides to punish him to protect their image, their brand, and also to set a shining example moving forward for college athletes to follow. And the punishment is we ain't going to let you play basketball for a couple months. Do you pull him out of school and make that kind of life-altering decision just because of that? That's the question. You don't get to ask answer another question. This is my show. You answer that question because that's what we're dealing with here. Chris in L.A., talk to me. Hey, Stephen A., good morning. Um, I just wanted to touch on, I caught the last hour, so I didn't get the first hour, but I was, I wanted to call on what you mentioned regarding uh, Magic and Sidney Moncrief in comparison and uh, what you're not seeing, the lack thereof of Lonzo Ball. Um, you remember when uh, we were doing the whole, they were doing the whole NBA draft and they were evaluating talent, and then you had mentioned, I don't know if it was your reporter or someone reported that Lonzo had showed up out of shape. You remember that, Stephen A., yes. potentially? yes. Yes. Okay, so right there, that right there kind of shows me, like, the red flag, and it makes me step back and think, did Magic really evaluate talent, or was this to generate, I can't say revenue for the Lakers, because obviously we know the Lakers are probably the most expensive NBA franchise now. But Well, they need revenue. They, really they ain't, ball, they ain't Ballmer. They ain't billionaires, so they need revenue. Make no mistake about that. Well, go ahead. There were red flags, and now you see the lack thereof, and like you said, the aggression and all that good stuff, Stephen A. It just makes you step back and say, did Magic really do his homework on the guy? And I like Lonzo. He's not playing well. I get it. He's lacking aggression. I get all that stuff. But we now it's time for us to take a step back and look at Palenka and Magic. And like, you guys really evaluate the Tatums, the other guys who were coming out of the draft. Did well, we really step this. back and let's do that and do what's best for Laker organization? Let, let's say this. It's not about whether or not they stepped back and did their homework. I don't think we need to question that about Magic. I think the question that Magic warrants with every passing day that Lonzo is struggling while we're comparing him to the other picks that Magic and the Lakers passed on, the real question ain't about homework. It's about whether or not you made a basketball decision or you made a box office decision. That's the question for Magic Johnson. I agree 100%, Stephen. But my thing is, if he did make a business decision, it not just set the Lakers back for years. I mean, it, it can set us back for years, Stephen, eh? Yeah, it can set us back that, for years. That, that's obviously. why you asked the question. That's why you asked the question. Because what we need to hear from Magic is he believes in this kid. He has seen enough to continue to believe in this kid. That's what we need to see from Magic Johnson yeah, moving sir. forward. Appreciate the call, man. Thank you. Let's go to Jeff in Hollywood. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Jeff? Hey, what up, Stephen A.? Man, love and respect, man. Um, I echo your feelings, basically, about that uh, LeVar Ball thing because, I mean, at first when LeVar Ball was, 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 came on the scene, he was brash, he was arrogant, but I saw something I thought was positive in the fact that he was trying to push his son. Right. And, but... There's a point, I think, where you got to back up. Now that he's in the NBA, you need to back up. 
And and with respect to the other son, I agree with you totally, man. It's like, what are you really trying to teach your son? Your son is like, oh, I could get away with doing this. It's okay to go somewhere to a foreign country and steal something. You know, I don't even think from a from a from a from a parent standpoint that he's really trying to teach his son the right thing. Because I mean, hey, you've seen it a million times. These guys play basketball and other sports, but that's a that's a small window of their life. They gotta be able to do other things. And a college education, I don't care, is necessary. So for him not to have won his child, I mean, with Lonzo he had a chance to play, so okay, go. But this other guy, he needs to be in college. Well listen, man, here's what it comes down to. The real problem with Lavar is that, you know, it's this mentality that it, it look. You're pulling your son out of school because he might not play till till the new year. You're drastically off altering his life because you're disgusted with how they're handling an immediate situation. What if Leangelo comes out there in January, Steve Alfred had put him on the court, and then Leangelo starts balling for UCLA? All right. I mean, he's coming back. He might have been back two months before March Madness. Right. Why mess with that? Because you don't like something. Exactly. That's and he's too not much. Teaching his son, and and what is he teaching his son? When something gets difficult, just discuss, just get disgusted and grab all your stuff and go home. That's not the right approach. There you go. Appreciate the call, man. Thank you. 866-729-3776. That's 866-ESPN. We'll close the show with your calls in a minute. You're listening live to Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! A few minutes left to go on the Stephen A. Smith Show ESPN Radio. Let's get right to it. Get you your points quick and succinctly. Don't do it. I will make you. Let's go to Billy in Long Island. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. What's up, Stephen A? I want to talk about Rob Gronkowski. I can't believe he got one game when Sue, when he was with the Lions, he got suspended two games when he cleaned, when he kicked that guy on the Green Bay yep. uh, lineman. Yep. He got suspended two games at least. And when Gronkowski it was despicable, he was even worse than that. Yes, yeah, inconsistency. And I'm white, and that's just crazy. It's inconsistency on the part of the National Football League, and that's what they got to do a better job of. Uh, more so than anything else. But I appreciate the call, Billy. Thank you so much. Let's go to Calvin. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, Cal. Hey, Stephen A. I, I really believe that Lonzo Ball Games has been overanalyzed, but mainly because of his dad. You know, yep. he, point guard is the hardest position you come out uh, of, of, of college and try to come into the pros and play. Everybody can't be Isaiah Thomas. And we'll, people will say, well, Magic Johnson came out and he was great, but Magic Johnson came into a ready-made experienced lineup and all the people that that Lonzo is leading are young people so he's learning that position I think he's going to be fine and I don't think Magic missed on his evaluation well, Calvin, at all. Cal- Calvin I appreciate that synopsis but let me let me say something to you here that's very very important we have to understand that Lonzo isn't being asked just to be a, a point guard Lonzo is being asked to reinvigorate Showtime see the difference that's the problem with this we have to understand the others have the license to just go out there and play ball. That's not Lonzo. You got to want Showtime. And and it's one of those situations where I think analyzing and evaluating one's personality should play a a tremendous factor in it as well. If I'm in New York, that's a different animal than Charlotte in North Carolina. If I'm in Charlotte, like, for example, let me give you a perfect example. You like this analogy, Cal? Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm in... I'm in L.A., all right, and I'm a star, and I love just being out there. I I, want to be on the cover of GQ. I want to be in Playboy magazine. I want to see out. I want to be seen out with a different woman every night. You understand? That's L.A., all right, in some people's eyes anyway, the sunshine, the palm trees, and all of that other stuff. You get where I'm coming from, Calvin? Yeah, I get you. Hold on, let me finish. How would that work in Charlotte? Wouldn't be the same in the, Charlotte. The, the Bible Belt. You see where I'm going? I get all of that. There's I something to believe. be said. There's something to be said about the environment that you inherit 
when you arrive someplace. It matters, man. And if you got Lonzo, to me, Laval Ball's personality inside his son would have been better suited for L.A., at least at this moment. I just believe that him, he will be all right in the long run. Him leading nothing but young men is part of his maturation that he I has think you're to right. go through to get I think to that you're right. point. I think you're you know? right, Calvin, but I think, I think you're right. But I think you got to be real about the question marks that come attached to the level of patience folks in Los Angeles will be willing to show him. That's They'll all I'm saying. That time. All right, man. Appreciate the call. Bill and Queens, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Stephen. Nice to take my call. I was going to say something about Eli, but sticking with the topic of our ball and sure. to answer your question, the gentleman got was beating around the bush. The correct answer as a father is no. You stay at UCLA. Everybody's watching. You screwed up. You fix it. And you let everybody know that you made a mistake and you're a man and you can pick yourself up and move forward. That's the correct answer. Well, a son, well, a son the son was willing to do it until a daddy yanked him out of school. My, my kid, if it was my kid, he'd, I'd be telling him, you're staying in UCLA and you're going to let everybody know that you're a man, you made a mistake, everybody stumbles, you're going to pick yourself up and move forward, yeah. and you're going to stay at UCLA and fix it. I agree with you. I agree. Period. Appreciate the call. Rob and Philly, you're live with Stephen A. What's up, Rob? Thanks for taking the call, Stephen A. Uh, real quick, with LeVar Ball, I agree with you totally. I think that he's not showing uh, his son uh, that he needs to be accountable and responsible. And I think that the lack of him accepting the consequences of his actions is something that is not a good precedent for him to set. Uh, also, I have a uh, quick question for you, man. want to get your opinion on it. It's two-part one. Uh, Kyrie Irving. One, do you think that his current team success is more of a product of him or the total sum of parts that are around him at this time? And I think, then it's, the second I think part- it's him and Brad Stevens is one hell of a coach, man. What a coach. Brad Stevens could coach his tail off. I think that has a lot to do with it. What's your second question? Second question is, do you view Kyrie Irving – uh, as a franchise player in the same vein and mention them in the same breath as Zeke and AI. Yes. I, be, I believe that. I believe at this point in time in his career, not when he was younger before LeBron arrived, but having been to three consecutive NBA finals, winning the championship, averaging 29 and 27 respectively in the two finals that he was a part of, closing the way that he does, hitting big time shots and doing what he does, I do believe that Kyrie Irving has earned the right to be mentioned in the same breath as those brothers. He's got that kind of game. I appreciate the call. Let's go to Hakeem in Brooklyn. You're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, hey, what's good? What's good? You're live on the air. You only got a minute. Make it happen. All right. Hey, listen, Stephen A., listen. I had a question about the Gronk situation. Didn't I just say you on the air? Go ahead. Ah. No, you did. You you, you you did. But I'm just saying, like, I just noticed that, like, a lot of the uh, sports people aren't calling it a disgusting act as they did before with uh, anybody else who might have did something that was a little foul during the game. Well, yeah, they did that. They did that, but I've done that because Gronk was wrong to do what he did. It was a disgusting act. As far as I'm concerned, he should have been suspended for more than one game. It should have been at least three. But I appreciate the call. Thank you. Let's go to Jacob and Callie. You're live with Stephen A. What's up? Jacob. Bye, Jacob. Muhammad in L.A. Real quick. Go ahead. Hey, Stephen A. I just want to make a point about that Gronk suspension. I think the NFL personally just suspended him one game because they want him in that primetime matchup with the Steelers. What do you think about that? Good point. Good point. Didn't even think about that. They play in a couple weeks. You got a valid point there. They play week 15. You know, they play a week from Sunday, I think. You might have a valid point there, Muhammad. They think about them ratings. They have been losing ratings and revenue due to all the protests and stuff. And so you're certainly not trying to take marquee players off the field if you don't have to. Could be a very, very valid point. I dropped the ball on that on my part, Muhammad, because the fact of the matter is you saying that's got me thinking even more about it. And I agree with you. That's probably the reason. Doesn't make it right because I still think he should have been suspended a minimum of three games. But that's just me. Got to get on out of here. 
I'm sick as a dog, but I made it through the show. Thank y'all for sticking with me. Uh, Stephen A. Smith show ESPN radio, eight, six, six, say ESPN is always the number to call up. We got a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to talk about as the week progresses and you will hear from me again until then. Peace and love. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith show weekdays at 1 PM Eastern on Sirius XM channel 80 and the ESPN app.